today this video is about a YouTuber who reveals the unpopular opinions of the natural hair movement. I am said YouTuber. If you want to see what these are, just carry on watching. Welcome back guys to another video. Me again, Miss Lauren Lee 11. I have some unpopular opinions from the natural hair movement that I picked up along the way. So this video kind of follows on from the last video I did, which is, is the natural hair movement finally over? And if so, what to do next? So I've got my phone here with me right now, and I'm just gonna be giving you one, two, three, four, five, five unpopular opinions about the natural hair movement that I discovered, I suppose some would say, is not tolerated in the natural hair movement. Number one being, I don't go by hair typing, I go by hair porosity. My hair is low porosity, and for me, that determines the type of products that I use, i.e. hair grease, leave-in. However, if I do the hair typing system, which is, if you're unfamiliar, ranges from one to four, and in those one to four, you've got letters as well. So you've got one A, one B, one C, all the way down to four A, four B, four C. Now, I range between 3B, 3C, and 4A, hence why I don't determine the type of products I'm gonna use because I'll be buying up a whole lot of products. Some products gonna work for this strand and this side, but not this side. So what I do is I just go by my hair needs, which is porosity. Having been low porosity, my hair tends to get dry very easily. It doesn't easily allow moisture in your hair, but on the other hand, it doesn't easily allow moisture to escape your hair. The characteristics of low porosity hair is that you've got a hair strand and you've got shafts laying on the hair strand. These shafts need to be heated for them to lift and then for the moisture to penetrate. The way you heat the hair is either through a steam treatment or a hot hair mask, which I tend to do at times. Once the moisture's in, I've got to seal it in quickly with a good slather of hair grease. As I've mentioned in my last video, I use the typing system for some of those who are not necessarily familiar with the porosity of their hair, and they're just more familiar with the hair typing system. Okay, so let's move on to number two. So as you know, in the natural hair movement, we were told not to use parabens, sulfates, silicones, mineral oils, all the above. Now, as I've mentioned in my last video, I was using hair grease on my scalp though, not necessarily on my hair. And I only started using hair grease on my hair when I introduced it on my channel. That's when I started using it properly on my hair. When I think about it, I have not necessarily stopped using mineral oil. Definitely not stopped using silicones. The Shampoo that my hair loves the most is Tresemme. I stopped using Tresemme because there was a bit of controversy. Just for, you know, morality. I've decided to go on to another product and it's the Cream of Nature one. I've shown you this before and it says it contains no parabens, no sulfates. However, it's still juicy. It doesn't dry up my hair, doesn't strip my hair. So it's the Cream of Nature Detangling Moisture Shampoo, I believe. In regards to mineral oil, yes, my hair loves mineral oil. I use old school products such as pink lotion and that contains mineral oil. My ringlets become juicy, they become bouncy and I will continue to use it. So number three, I think this one is all relative and I find that a lot of people who are really into the natural hair movement, they're sticking to the rules and they're not changing their minds. A big chop doesn't necessarily mean a TWA. Yes, I said it, a big chop does not necessarily mean a teeny weeny afro. It is all relative. What I mean by this guys is, just going by the definition of a big chop, cutting off a certain amount of hair. When I done my big chop, my natural hair was shoulder length, just past shoulder length, and I cut my hair. That to me was considered as a big chop. Now I've also seen videos of someone and she had butt length hair. She cut her hair to bra strap length. So from butt length to bra strap length, again, it was considered a big chop. The reason why I say it's all relative is because the amount that she's cut off would equate to the amount that I've cut off. It's only because my hair has been cut really short, hence why it looks like a big chop. However, hers is defined as a big chop also because it's the same amount. Okay, so number four. For those that don't use hair grease or are inquisitive about hair grease but are not sure because of the attributes of hair grease, I am here to tell you water does penetrate through hair grease. Otherwise, 
you wouldn't be able to wash it out your hair. This is coming from somebody who has low porosity hair. If Even if I didn't have hair grease on my hair, it takes a while for water to penetrate my strands, right? That's just my hair without hair grease. My hair with hair grease having low porosity hair. If I was to spritz my hair, and I, I believe I've shown this in another video, if I was to spritz my hair with hair grease on it, my hair will eventually start to coil and curl. That is showing that moisture is entering into my strands. So therefore, yes, and no, hair grease doesn't take forever to wash out. Some people have said they use dish soap. For me personally, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for myself, um, if it works for you. I just usually use the Cream of Nature shampoo and that will get it out, wash it once or twice, but usually twice would suffice. Okay, last one. Last one, I feel like a lot of you are gonna come for me for this one. <laughs> I'm only playing. I have found that you don't need deep conditioning to grow your hair, okay? All right, bear with me, bear with me, you don't. The reason why I say that, guys, is because I have tried it. I've gone through long periods of not deep conditioning my hair. However, my hair was moisturized and conditioned, just not deep conditioned. So I've gone through a period, maybe about four to five months, because obviously you need a length of time to see if you're, you know, how your hair's reacting to a certain regimen or treatment. It's not deep conditioning. However, I detangle with my shampoo, I condition my hair and I leave it in for about 20 minutes. Put my leave-in conditioner in, put my hair grease in and my hair flourishes. I'm not saying not to use deep conditioner. Deep conditioning does work for me over time. It's not an overnight thing. One thing I will say where deep conditioning comes in handy is when I'm about to straighten my hair. So for the next two washes, if I'm gonna straighten my hair, okay. So what deep conditioning tends to do for my hair prior to me straightening my hair is it gets my ends to lie down. My ends are more moisturized, um, less brittle. So my ends are less brittle, my hair looks more sleek. And that's more so the time that I'll tend to deep condition the most. However, as I said, it's very time consuming for me. I feel I do a lot to my hair anyway. I mean, doing this style alone, guys, I'm not even gonna lie. It was, it's an eye-watering amount of time. The day before I started, and it took about four hours then. That was a lot for me, and I had to just leave it. The next day, guys, took eight hours eight hours this is the length of my hair so it's pretty much butt length but yes it took eight hours so 12 hours in total yes my unpopular opinions from this youtuber i have revealed them to you but if you do want to see what i have to say about the natural hair movement and what others have had to say in response to my video then you can go and click over here now to watch that video